Welcome to SHOT Show TV. I'm Rachel Kopchak and I am up here in the live TV studio and I'm joined now by Mike Duke. He is the law enforcement SME for Vertra. Welcome. Good morning, Rachel. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what Vertra does? Um, Vertra, uh, we're based out of Tempe, Arizona. Uh, what we do is we manufacture use of force and marksmanship uh, platforms for military and law enforcement. Okay. And give us a little bit of background on your history in law enforcement. Um, as far as my background, um, I was in the U.S. Army for four years. I was a paratrooper, and then I got out and became a police officer. Uh, I was a police officer for 20 years in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, it's a suburb of Phoenix. I did 20 years there and retired as a sergeant. Wow. Now, that expertise has really led you to... Uh, help in some of the development of the simulators you guys offer. Why don't you tell us about some of those and uh, how your background is influenced? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as the systems we have, we have what's called a V300 system. That's a five screen, 300 degree system. Um, it's use of force based, uh, scenario based. So um, my background is used in creating the scenarios and creating the training content for, for the simulator. Uh, so what's good about the system is that I was used to always being on one screen, uh, 100 degrees. Um, is there some training value to it? Yes, but I saw in my experience of 20 years that it created some bad training habits, not moving you know, off your target and things like that. Uh, with the new system now, we can integrate tools that officers use on a daily basis, like their duty weapon, tasers, pepper spray, uh, their rifles, and they can integrate that into the system and go through scenarios. Mm -hmm. And with our scenarios specifically, um, they're just not what people commonly refer to as shoot, don't shoot. Uh, what we do is uh, we integrate anything an officer could uh, come across on a daily basis, whether it be a domestic violence call, dealing with an emotionally disturbed person, traffic stops, and we can change those scenarios up actually as they're going through so it's as if they're actually on a call. So that's what's kind of unique about the system. Wow. And then you also update the system as well with new scenarios or new things that are happening, right? In, uh, in the yes, news, in the media that come up and you can really update it and keep people on you know, in tip-top shape. Uh, yes, ma'am. As, as uh, Obviously, as laws change um, throughout the country and as training uh, progresses, um, I make some new scenarios to, obviously, like you said, be up to date um, with what's going on out there right now. A lot of things going on right now is the escalation and de-escalation of, of situations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as law enforcement officers, you have to be very, probably the biggest skill you have to have is have ver good verbal skills. If right. you don't have those good verbal skills, a situation that could commonly be very easy could turn bad very quickly. Right. So. How do these simulators help with the increasing those verbal skills? Um, as far as the simulator, again, you know, you have that, that safety aspect where you're not doing it out on the street. You can make mistakes inside the simulator that you can't make out in person. You know, you can't call a timeout. You can't, you okay. know, just run away. You know, as officers, we're expected to, you know, run into a situation and deal with it. With the simulator, you can get in there and, like I said, make a mistake whether it be you know, verbal skills or whatnot, you can work on those things that you're having issues with and get better at it. So uh, again, we would rather you make those mistakes inside a simulator than out there in the street and get yourself hurt or, or God forbid someone else get hurt. Right, now are there cost savings involved with, you, with for law enforcement when they use this? Oh, absolutely. Um, obviously, when it comes to uh, ammunition um, you know, alone, you know, you're talking thousands of dollars that law enforcement agencies spend every year in ammunition. Uh, give you an example, um, in our simulator, for every four or five trigger pulls, it's only going to cost the agency a penny mm -hmm. um, to use. So think about the cost savings in that alone. So, and also in the, in the use and abuse of equipment, um, typically your you know, average handgun or rifle would only last maybe 30,000 rounds or so before you have to do major things to it. Um, the life of our weapons used in the simulator are going to be twice that long. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the, again, cost of replacing weapons and so forth. So Right. What are the other simulators you have? Um, the others, the well, right? obviously we talked about the, the main one, the V300. Mm -hmm. And you can get that in a 180 version, which is three screen, or a 100, which is portable. Um, but our other big product that, that we like is our VST Pro. Mm -hmm. And what that is is a marksmanship system. And that's based on ballistics. Right. So uh, an example would be you take the... Um, the information on the side of an am ammo box uh, that you purchase right. and you would put that inside the computer and you can implement uh, environmental such as wind so if you have a 20 mile an hour wind outside let's say like here in Vegas during the summer it can get you know 110 right. degrees well you can put that temperature inside um, wow. the computer as well because as you, as people know that use weapons out on a range that can affect the ammunition as you're firing depending on the environment mm -hmm. so what the company has done we got they got with Lockheed Martin and 
got the company to validate our system down to a .002, um, which basically says that you know it's accurate as if you're out on an actual range. Mm -hmm. So, which is which is really cool. So, again, when you're talking, you know, you asked earlier about cost savings. Again, I can put someone on a range, and instead of you know spending a hundred dollars on a box of ammunition, I'm looking at maybe a dollar or two, getting the same type of training, right. and it's realistic. It's realistic. Yes. It's so realistic, in fact that Hollywood's a little bit involved too. How is Hollywood involved? Hollywood's involved in, we have a content team that um, a lot of the guys, their backgrounds are involved where they were on Hollywood uh, movie sets and production and making movies and TV. So they actually help teach me on how to make these things more realistic. So when we go out and film, it's actually like filming on a movie set. Right. And we actually use real actors. Uh, we use real environments. So let's say like, I guess Jason, uh, Jason Bourne movies being filmed here right now, so it'd be the same premise. I would pick a location where I want to film a scenario. I go out, we set up a movie set. We actually hire real actors. So they'll go out and seek these actors out for certain parts and, and bring those in. And the reason we do that is, my experience in law enforcement, we're not very good actors uh, <laughs> as police officers. Um, we don't have that emotion, so I notice with the, using an actor, they can portray that emotion, whether it be anger or mm -hmm. being emotionally upset and things like that. And it does make a big difference yeah. um, for me when I see officers go through these scenarios and they give me feedback saying, hey, this is the best training I've had in years. Right. And it's very realistic. So it makes me feel good that I'm, I'm giving back to, to those that I used to work with. That's great, so. great work. Thanks so much, we appreciate your time. It's great Thank talking you. with you. Same to you. All right, I'm Rachel Kopchak and this is SHOT Show TV.